Hey everybody, Mark Spector Comics, and I'm back. What do you call a brewery, barbecue, and comic books? A good time. All right, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you get in a timely fashion. So if you heard the intro, we went brewery, barbecue, comic books. What is that? It was a great comic book show. So I was uh, tipped about this maybe a few weeks ago. It's been now almost a month since the, um, the comic show. But um, a few weeks leading to the show, I follow like, a Facebook group in like the New England area, and uh, they just like promote any shows, you know, comic books, whatever. And uh, there was a a show in Ipswich, Massachusetts. It was the first time I went to Ipswich, and um, the show was called Clam City Comic Con. Right. There you go. Boom. Um, it was hosted by True North Ale Company. This was the first, like I said, first time I went to Ipswich, Massachusetts. It's, it's almost like a two-hour drive north of me. It's north of Boston. I rarely go up to the North Shore area. Um, I'm working now in the North Shore area, but um, prior to that, I, I would never really go up there. So I'm not really too familiar with the uh, the area. But um, it's a coastal city. Um, really cool, cool spot. And, um, you know, what caught my eye was brewery and comic books. So um, I contacted a couple of my friends in the area, contacted Mike from Lunch Money Comics, and I also contacted Carlos from Los's Comic Journey. Uh, they're both on YouTube. I'll put their information in the uh, description as well so you guys can uh, follow them and uh, check out their hauls. Um, it was, I believe, a, just a Sunday show from 12 to 5, and it also coincided with the uh, football game. So the Patriots were playing that day, so uh, it made it for a great time. So uh, if you've not watched my channel before, we talk about comics and beer. So um, I did not get a chance to bring any of the beers back home from uh, the brewery, but I did sample several beers. And... Um, they were pretty good. So uh, before we get into the books a little further, I'm going to pour a beer. And uh, as we know, we're in the fall season. So uh, I drink a lot of Oktoberfest and a lot of pumpkin ales. So <laughs> uh, this one is, is local. Well, more regional than anything else. I've never tried this, uh, this uh, pumpkin beer. But this is from, this is called Pumpkin Party Pumpkin Ale from Lone Pine Brewing Company. And it's actually closer to the brewery at uh, North Ale than it is to me. It's out of Portland, Maine. Uh, so 4.2% um, light beer. So uh, cheers. Let's try it out. Not bad. Um, like I said, big fan of the breweries, big fan of small comic shows. So this was perfect. Um, not a big fan of going into the big larger shows. I know uh, by the time this releases, New York Comic Con has just finished about a week ago. Um, you'll rarely see me at you know conventions of that size. Just way too big, very overwhelming, and. Uh, I feel like you don't often get really good deals. You, you tend to get better deals. Comic swaps, smaller co uh, venues, smaller comic shows, like this one. So, Clam City Comic Con. I believe this was their first year hosting it. Um, Josh was the, uh, was the one that hosted it. I believe he also works at the uh, Ale Company, uh, True North Ale Company. He, I, I talked to him for a little bit. He said that, he started this back down in North Carolina, and it was a huge hit down there. And then when he moved up north, he figured, let's give it a go. So um, it was quite successful. 
Um, I believe they're going to be doing it more frequently. So um, when I get some information on it, I'll let you guys know as well. So um, it was initially going to be happening in the spring, but uh, I think it just, I don't know if it was weather or, or, or something came up that they ended up um, pushing it to the fall. So um, went with my son and uh, we did a little bit of hunting. So let me uh, show you what I picked up. All right. So the first book I ended up getting, um, so my son is a big, you know, I've talked about it many times before, if you haven't watched this channel before, my son's big into the, you know, Sonic, the Sonic, uh, the Hedgehog universe. So he was looking for like a cool Sonic book, um, something to read, a little back, uh, back issue, you know, and, uh, we ended up going to one vendor. I talked to this guy, uh, his name is Jeff, really nice guy. And, um, I told him, I'm just looking for, you know, some run of the mill Sonic book, Archie, you know, comics, whatever to see what you got. And, um, he ended up having a bunch of knuckles. So, um, if you watched the previous uh, video, I ended up unboxing, um, a knuckles number one, uh, which was a really sweet book, but, um, he had one of the later issues. I believe that the series ran to like issue number 32 or something like that, but, um, this was the first book. This was Knuckles, the Echidna, issue number 20, 21. And um, he actually just gifted it to my son, which I was very appreciative, very cool. Uh, really nice of him to do that. So thank you, Jeff. And uh, it was a pretty good, pretty good issue. Um, these tend to be much more difficult to find, the later issues versus like the 10, first 10 to 15 issues of the series. So this was cool. Nice read, like I said. And the cover's pretty cool, too. Um, he had, a, I think, maybe four or five back issues. And um, he ended up, like I said, he gifted it to my son. So that was nice. Um, I was primarily looking for Golden Age when I was there because I, I just think that, you know, just finding some of these books out there in the wild, especially in, like, nice condition, they're getting harder and harder to get. And I'm just more drawn into the Golden Age. You know, Golden and Silver Age, if you watch my channel, I... I tend to avoid the modern stuff unless it's like for something I'm picking up for my son that he wants to read. He, like I said, he likes Sonic. So once in a while, I'll pick him up uh, like a trade paperback or stuff like that. And there were a few, a few dealers there that had some more modern stuff. Um, but it's just not really something I'm, I'm personally into for the collection. So I did find there were two dealers there that had like a good amount of golden age. And, um, one of the first dealers when we walked right into the door, it was Josh's booth and his partner's booth. He had some cool books there on the wall. He had an, um, his partner had, I think it was a Captain America comics. I think it was like an issue in the fifties. Um, but it was a low grade. It was like a one Oh, but it was like a little over a thousand. So I'm still out there hunting for like a nice, uh, lower grade Captain America comics. Um, around like sub 1000. I don't find it eventually, <laughs> but um, the price and the condition point didn't fit the criteria for today. And, you know, I didn't want to just spend a thousand dollars just on one book, but <laughs> I came pretty close and I'll show you that book last. Um, but I went to a different a vendor, super nice guy. Um, his name is, you know, not ringing a bell right now, but, um, I wish I got his contact information because he had some really nice books. So, the one book that caught my eye was kind of like on his wall and uh, that's what kind of like gravitated me to his uh, booth and I'll show you that book first. So this is Police Comics issue number 82. So this is from September of 1948 and uh, this is just like the cover itself just really draw my drew my attention when I saw this. This is really cool. You see, uh, if you're not familiar with this com this uh, character here, he's very, very popular, especially in DC. Lesser known character, but he dates back to the Golden Age, as you can see here. And uh, this is Plastic Man. <laughs> and it's just a really cool headshot. You know, he's, uh, looks like he's just like trying to escape the, uh, the police officers here. And as you can see, it's police comics. So uh, poli uh, Plastic Man, Dead is worth a million dollars. 
And uh, he had this um, listed at 175 and estimated grade at a 7.0. So like I said, these are tough, tough, tough books to get in. You know, if you can get like a golden age book in mid grade or higher, like it's tough. You know, this book is from 1948. So, uh, like I said, he was asking 175 for it. I, I kept on looking around. He was like, yeah, just, you know, keep on digging and uh, see what you find. And I'll, I'll make you a nice price. So, uh, I started, that was the, the the wall book I gravitated to. He had another police comics book there, too. So, they, he had two nice covers there. This one was the one that I gravitated more to. So, I picked this one up. Um, and they were both in nice condition. And then the second book. So, I went through the back issues. Some nice golden age, you know. Key books, non-key books, great covers. So um, I actually talked about this book. I think it was earlier in the year when um, when the whole like DC hype started coming around with the James James Gunn introduction to the the future. You know, I guess I don't know phases or whatever they're gonna call it. But um, I did a little video on it. I did a little bit of speculation, and it's very difficult to speculate on Golden Age because it doesn't really get impacted much about about uh when like new movies and stuff like that you know so um i do like this character um and when i like certain superheroes i tend to go after their most rivaled villains so you know i love villains i love villain covers um so i think you you know you know where i'm going with this um i talked about this character this character is black hawk obviously i can't afford the first appearance of black hawk's very expensive uh, well, you know, it's relatively expensive, but good luck finding one. So, um, this character's first villain appearance, it actually came in the self-titled issue, Black Hawk, Black Hawk issue number 50, right? Uh, yes, this came from, this was quality comics. This, uh, predated DC, you know, before, well, not predated DC, but like predated from when DC took over the title, the DC took it uh, took it over later in the Golden Age, I believe, or right at the end of the Golden Age, going into the Silver Age, and um, so this is this came out in March of 1952. This is uh, I don't know who did the cover. Um, it doesn't say, but the interiors are done by Reed Crandall. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Reed Crandall. He does some great artwork. Um, I read this issue. It was actually pretty cool. Um, there were several stories in there. It was the first story that actually talked about this, um, the introduction to Killer Shark, which is who you see there on the cover. Uh, you see these uh, self, they're actually like airplanes, but they're designed like sharks and they actually dive in the water. And uh, this is one of the, uh, this is the villain right here, Killer Shark, this guy right here. And it's actually, he... Uh, in the story, there's, um, a battle where they go into like this, you know, random city. That's not part of like, it's not like a real city. So it's a fictitious city, but, um, the killer shark guy goes into the city. He raids the city, takes a lot of the jewelry and, uh, they end up fighting the black Hawks and they end up escaping. And, uh, when they thought that they actually crashed, they ended up dive bombing into the, uh, water. And they escaped into their little fortress. So that's what you see here. This little uh, cool little uh, design here for the uh, shark. Nice cover. I liked it. Um, and he had it listed at a 4.0 for 60 bucks. So I thought that was fair. It's that's a tough. This is a, a one of those like minor. You know, it's a key book, but it's not an easy book to find, especially in high high grade. Good luck if you can find one. It's very expensive. And then the last book that I got from this vendor, I like collecting some of these like historically significant books. And uh, this is the first time I've seen this book in the uh, back issues, digging, hunting, you know, what have you. And uh, I've seen this cover before and I knew it was significant. <coughs> so they ended up just picking it up. And this is your United States and it's uh, no number. It's just the one issue. And uh, this came out in nine, yeah, 1946, I believe, June of 1946. And uh, it has, uh, it's a seduction of the innocent book. 
So this was this book was introduced in, during that case. Uh, if you're not familiar with the seduction of innocent, it was a, a very important case that happened late in the golden age when there was a lot of like you know very you know risque covers, very graphic covers, um, graphic stories from the golden age, and um, basically it ended up establishing the comic code in uh, 1955, and that like completely changed the uh, way comics were um you know printed going forward but uh you see this cool cover and you're like wondering well why is this book you know referenced in the seduction of the instant well there were some very um let's just say sensitive uh topics in here so uh i'll uh this you know describe it a little bit and then i'll actually show up some of the pictures because the artwork inside is actually pretty nice um so there were several things that were described about this book by the um, writer, I think Renthrum. Renthrum was the, one, the guy from The Seduction and Innocent. And um, he talked about there was a hanging panel, which actually I'll show you that. It's not anything crazy. Um, talks about a hanging panel, which you see there, which was uh, for California. And uh, the cool thing about this book, it actually talks about every state that's in the Union, in the United States. And uh, there's some great illustrations you can see here. If you've never seen this book, it is really cool. Like the colors pop. This is a really nice presenting book. Um, there's a lot of information about each state. and Because like I said, this book came out in 1946. Obviously, if you know a little bit about history... United States, um, Hawaii and Alaska were not actually states in the Union yet. They're referred to as um, territories. So uh, they talk about this right in the beginning. Facts about the territory of Alaska and Hawaii. So they do that with every, um, every state in here. I'll just flip out a random one. Let's do uh, Missouri. And it talks about Missouri, so the nickname, the show me state, and there's a little bit of some facts about it. And this was actually one of the sensitive topics in the story that actually talks about some um, African Americans in here that were enslaved in chains. So there's some, like I said, there's some sensitive stuff in here. Um, it talks about a young girl that's being massacred. And um, there was another, another man that was um, chained up against the pole being whipped. So it was, like I said, some, you know, it talks about, like, is this how we want to remember the United States in the history book? So that's, like, why it was, you know, brought into the uh, Seduction and Innocent. So, um, the, like I said, the illustrations are really, really nice. And uh, maybe I'll do, like, something where I'll take a picture of one of these and I'll, like, just display it on Instagram so you guys can see if you are interested. Because um, this is not one of those books that you find often. And... Um, it's not like when you can just go online and just like find it digitally and just try to read it. It's, it's a tough book to find. So maybe I'll do that. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Really cool, really cool book. And you know, I like the historical books. Like you've seen me before. I, I picked up um, an Is This Tomorrow, which was like an anti-communist, you know, book. So like these historical books are really, really neat. And um, he had this one listed at uh, $90 and it was a 6.5. So it's a nice grade, nice grade as well. So uh, that dealer was really, really nice. Um, he had some fantastic books. And, uh, you know, he, like I said, he, he was like, find some books and uh, I'll give you a nice deal. And for those three books, he ended up giving me, you know, a number. And I didn't even counter back. I didn't question it. I was like, this is great. So he's like, how's 250? I was like, yeah, I think that's fair. You know, so I paid him the 250 and I thanked him and, you know, we shared a couple of stories and um, it was just, you know, a great time. Um, after that, I ended up going, uh, had some lunch. Uh, I went to go see the, uh, the, they had this little barbecue food truck there. It was the, um, Pretty good, we end, it, but it was a long line, <laughs> to be honest. There was a decent amount of people there. It is Like I said, it's a brewery. They had the football game on, and it was a comic show. So there was a lot of people going in and out, and uh, it was like a good 20, 30-minute wait. 
Um, we ended up just getting some burgers, me and my son. And uh, I believe he had a hot dog and just called the rep because it was like, I didn't want to wait too long. And um, at that time, my buddy Carlos, uh, Carlos's, you know, journey, um, we ended up sitting down. I saw him sitting down. He was eating lunch. And I was like, you know, we're just talking about the show, you know, how, how cool the spot it was. His family was in there as well. So I met his wife and his kids. Super nice. And um, my son was looking at his uh, Knuckles book. And then I was like, well, I'm going to wrap this up. And uh, I want to, you know, walk around for a little bit more time. And the plan was to record some, <laughs> some footage. And that's why you're seeing me talk a lot. Um, the goal was to, to record some footage. Unfortunately, when I got back and did the rounds, I wanted to spend like another 20, 30 more minutes. It was already like three-ish, you know, and um, my son was like all over it. He was r running laps around the uh, the swap, um, behaving, but he was just like running around uncontrollably. And I was like, yeah, the footage I was planning on doing um, didn't happen. So uh, if you want to see footage of the show, I'm going to tag my buddy Mike from Lunch Money Comics. I'll put that in the description below. If you haven't seen it already, check it out. You'll see the show, the way it was laid out. He does a nice interview with Josh. I talked to him for a little bit. And um, he was the one that kind of got this whole thing together. It, it was a good video, so check it out. So um, I went back to Josh's booth, and um, I saw Mike was uh, bringing out some books for a potential trade. And I saw there was a, a nice book he was uh, eyeing. And I think he ended up selling a couple of the books to, um, you know, help fund the uh, books that he got, which he has some nice books. And um, when I was looking back at the book, the book that he, I thought he was going to end up picking up, uh, it was still there. So I was like, huh, I wonder what happened. Um, so I talked to the two guys. I talked to Josh and his partner. So this book, nice, nice book. I've always wanted to get one. Um, was never in a rush to get this book because um, I knew one would always – you know, be around. So I asked for the book. I looked it over and um, I'll show you what it is. Nice Bronze Age Grail book, in my opinion. When I think of uh, Bronze Age big books, I think of offhand about six to eight books right offhand that I, I consider the big uh, Bronze Age Grails. And uh, this one, I think you guys would probably agree, fits into that category. So uh, this is none other than Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 129. So, uh, this book caught my attention. I was trying, trying not to spend uh, over $1,000 for the whole thing. You know, because I got to think too, like, my driving there, the food, what books I'm going to, you know, purchase or not purchase. And I did bring books to trade as well. And I wanted to trade, you know, a couple of my books to help, you know, at least offset some of the purchases and um he didn't he wasn't interested in trading because it was him and his partner's book so they they needed to get cash for it so i looked at the book um he had it initially the sticker price for 1300 and uh, but the grade was lower uh he had at least you know the sticker it was vg minus and uh once i saw that he he like initially was like well no this is not the price he was like well um, he was like, well, I can get it down to a thousand. And I was like, ah, I still, I still didn't want to pay that much. Uh, cause like I said, I was on a budget. I, I had a number in mind where I wanted to be, you know, comfortable and still feel good about the purchase. And, you know, also them feel good about, about selling it too, because they were, you know, it was their, both of their books. So I know they, they needed to, to be at a certain number too. So I was like, well, I have cash. Um, and then like, this is where I need to be. And, you know, if you guys can sell it, that's great. If not, that's great as well. And uh, ended up paying, he said, 800 bucks, And I was like, okay, that, I think that's fair. Well, we can do that. So um, ended up giving him the, the money. And uh, we talked a little bit further. You know, he was, he was saying that we we're going to do like, you know, possibly a show in the spring. We'll see. Uh, it was definitely a great turnout. And, uh, and then that was that. And then my son was like all over it. I had to head out <laughs> and that was the end of the show. Um, so it was a great time.
fantastic experience. The vendors there were great. Ended up also talking to Chris from uh, Connecticut uh, CT Comics. He ends up going to a lot of the um, the shows in the area as well. I've met him prior at the uh, Three Men in the Basement crawl. Super nice guy. He had some good books there too. Uh, didn't end up uh, buying any books off of him, but we, we talked for a little bit. Um, so it was like, it was cool, you know, spent a little bit of time with Mike, spent some time with Carlos and, uh, met some great people there. So, uh, that was my haul. Sorry. I took, talked uh, <laughs> quite a bit. Um, wish I took some footage to see, uh, you know, so you guys could see it, but I will link in my buddy Mike's, uh, video. So you guys can check out the footage and it was a great time. So uh, if you're ever in the North shore area, check out that brewery. I'll put the information down below and uh, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Um, and until next time, Mark Spectre Comics, out.